look at your wife. Look at your wife. Let's just, you know, telling them what's going on behind the scenes. Dropping the uh, cherry bombs. Hey, good evening, folks. Uh, it is Sunday. Uh, yeah. Is that is that your hand or is that? Is That's that my hand. Oh, okay. Your wife's hand's kind of big, so I don't know. Um, so it's May 16th, and uh, it is Sunday evening for everybody here. What a wild week. What a freaking wild week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, Monday was okay, and then we had a gap down on Tuesday, and then Wednesday was kind of like a, a bottom. And then Thursday was a little bit of a relief rally, and then kind of Friday we had a little bit more of a follow-through. Um you know, and it kind of took, uh, <laughs> so it kind of, you know, helped us a little bit, I, I'd say. But I did take a loss last week. So I think it was like 130 something dollars loss last week in total. And, uh, but I'm still positive for the month so far, still about $700 up for the month. And I made some moves last week that kind of uh, just freed up a little bit more buying power, take advantage if we have another pullback and uh also took uh you know my no assignment strategy i took 200 shares of rk and i think at the end of the day on friday around 105 106 ish somewhere around there my strike was 110 so i took two 200 shares of rk they're sitting in my account right now and then before the market closed on friday i went ahead and put on two cover calls for rk at 110 for a buck 75 each so I kind of work it out in my favor. As long as the thing doesn't tank down to 80 bucks, so I get another, well, I mean, if it does go down to $80, I actually have uh, another two puts on down there. So I'll probably just take another 200 shares and average down. But um, I think it's a good one to good one to CC on. You know, I mean, 175 bucks. I think that's out like two weeks. Let me see how far away that was out. Might have been three. Uh, RK, let's see here. Um, well, yeah, May, uh, May 28th. So two weeks out, 175 bucks a pop. So I can't go wrong there. Um, I did roll out a couple other problem childs. I just took pins off. It didn't look good, uh, long term. but honestly, this pullback, if you look at a chart, it looks technical to me. You know, I mean, I know people out there are always going to say, oh no, it was because of this, because of that, the colonial, this blah, 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 gas prices going up. But it looked technical. Just look at a chart. It looks technical to me. Um, and sometimes that maybe there's just a, a news item out there that could spark the, the move down and then it becomes technical. But uh, we do have a guest tonight. James is sitting in the background. You, he's, you know, been around uh, the Discord for the last, uh, what, about a month, month and a half, two months, or something like that? Roughly. Roughly. Maybe a little and more. And uh, he's been, you know, chatty in there. Chatty Kathy, as I like to call it. Um, and then we got... Uh, you know, he also contributes on the Thursday night chats, which if you want to, you know, join the Thursday night chat, all you got to do is go in the Discord, you know, which we renamed uh, Retire with Options. That's Randy's uh, YouTube channel name. And then we just renamed the channel, renamed the option, excuse me, the Discord to Retire with Options just because it was kind of fitting. So uh, it makes sense. And uh, I think we're all in agreement there. But um, so, yeah, that's kind of the history of my I, I what rolled MasterCard down? Sorry, there's one last thing I had to take care of. Rolled MasterCard out uh, like three weeks or something like that for a credit. So I was able to roll it down and out for a credit, which doesn't always happen. But, you know, MasterCard was one of those ones that let me. So why don't you recap how your week went, Jerry? And because uh, I know you did a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of dodging and in and out of stuff and try to fix your buy in power, which I got up to 57 percent, by the way, at one point. So that's the highest I hit. What? You know, tell us, give us a recap. Yeah, the week was rough for me. Um, it it, uh, it tested my patience. It tested my resolve. And uh, I really didn't do a whole lot, to be honest with you. I, I was sweating there for a little bit. Um, my buying power literally shot up to uh, 74% uh, at, the, at the peak of it. And I still sat, I, I still just sat there because I didn't have anything expiring on Friday, okay? And yeah. so I thought, we can't have these many don't these many down days in a row. We're going to have to get some relief here. So luckily I sat and um, 
I, I actually put a couple of things on my little low impact trades that I always talk about. Um, I put a few of those on. I took a, uh, if anybody follows my Wednesday videos, I took the Viatris leap off. So made a couple of trades. I put an oxy on, I thought it was like a three hour hold <laughs> and then I took it back off and made 25 bucks. Um, luckily Friday was a big up day. Uh, really kind of, it really kind of relieved me going into this weekend because, you know, yeah. if it wasn't for Friday, I'd probably be sitting here with that kind of a face <laughs> going on. Cause I was up, I was down $6,000 for the week. No, 7,000 at the most at the peak. And, uh, Friday turned around nice folks. What's that? Unrealized, not to mention unrealized. Yeah, all paper, your stuff was in the money, right? Paper, paper losses, right? So Friday came around, turned it around six thousand dollars. I'm only down a thousand bucks. Paper loss, unrealized for the week. I did realize two hundred and fifty dollars in profits for the week, though. So I did realize those net liquidation wise. I am down one percent for the week, which. I'm completely ecstatic about from where it was throughout the week. So had a good week. I, I, I can't complain. Didn't do much. I probably did like five trades in total and uh, yeah, mostly was, sat on my hands. Yeah. Well, I mean, thumpers in here saying diamond hands, but yeah, definitely Titanic hands. I was down <laughs> like, I think nine K or something like that. I think it's the worst I got through the whole week, but you know, there was only like three things in the money. You know, the rest of the stuff is just, you know, it's all bullshit. It's not even getting close to, well, I mean, there's stuff that was close to being in the money, but, you know, it takes a pretty good down week to cause that. Unless you're like Thumper. Thumper, uh, oh, man, he had a rough week. But, uh, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. That's what Cloud Ninja was like to say. But uh, let's do some hellos here, and uh, we'll get James on here in a little minute here. Uh, all good. Hey, uh, well, I guess I kind of skipped Thumper. I don't know what he's talking about there. MDB. Um, he had a rough week too, didn't he? <laughs> if I remember correctly. I, I, think, I, I think he recovered okay. on Friday. Friday was like the 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 lifeboat, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I mean, looking at a chart, we're still not back where we were on Monday, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, but I'm in the green on a lot of stuff too, especially when I took advantage of stuff on Monday. Uh, you know, because you don't know what type of week you're going to have. It's always you know hindsight's twenty twenty. In this case here, it's like, oh, if I'm going to take advantage of this, put some extra crap on, and uh, try to take off some winners if you have any to free up some buying power to put some put some new stuff on. And I just you know, I had five Microsofts I could have taken off on Monday, and I didn't do it. It was kind of a strong day for Microsoft too. Like it just you know, Marcus down and it kind of remained flat. And then it's like, well, uh, I didn't take them off and I probably should have because it ended up being down like two or three hundred dollars. And, you know, that was eleven thousand dollars in buying power margin impact it took. So I could have put that on. That's that would have been a lot, a boatload of extra crap I could have put on. But all good. Uh, let's see. Th Sunday night. Yeah. Parte. Uh, she's a big partier, folks. So hit her up. She's got a big old castle to, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of like, yeah. You want to get married and stuff like that? Her house is the place. Circular um, driveway and everything. Exactly. And a gazebo. I mean, everything. Freaking stucco gazebo. All nine yards. Uh, let's see here. They're having me yeah, out. No, we're not. We're fine. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, do you all know when leap options dates get open? Uh, well, I think the next set opens up in what? June or July? Yeah, I would imagine June. Um, no, not every don't. stock though gets gets the June expirations. I don't believe. Yeah, so um, I did buy. Whew, I did buy another freaking leap, thanks to James, <laughs> which he'll probably talk about it. But yeah, uh, I think there. So yeah, January twenty twenty three right now, but maybe in June or July, maybe we'll have them going out to June or July twenty twenty three. I mean, we're somewhat new to leaps. I mean, I've known the concept for 10 years. I've just never really followed the date. So I don't really know when the new ones come out. Maybe James knows. Maybe we'll ask him. But uh, let's see. Hi, Dave and Jerry. Look forward to the stream. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Chase. 
Uh, let's see here. Freedom Seeker, good evening. You got good old Dan here, uh, which <laughs> I don't know why he's on that account, but uh, let's see. He's here. on both. Is he on both? Um, yeah. <laughs> double dipping, huh? Uh, we got what's his face on? I don't even know his real name. Do you know his real name? Yeah, I think it's Ad Rocks. <laughs> Uh, he talks on uh, Thursday nights too. He'll come in there and talk, but uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think he's ever shared his name. So we got. Uh, well, well, she made it here. She got out of her cat sanctuary for the night, and uh, and she made it here right on time. So perfect time in there. What what time is it in Hawaii? Uh, I don't know. That's a good point. Four o'clock, three o'clock, a.m. No, no, it's p.m. It's before you, mm -hmm. so. Is it two hours before you or what? I don't know. I think it's different. I know, like, <laughs> so uh, good old Dan here. Switch accounts. Uh, see, Diamond Hands. Yeah, Titanic Hands for me. Um, yeah, <laughs> Diamond Hands. I don't even know what that thing really what it meant. It's just cool, you know, a Diamond Hand, you know. But I don't know who came up with that. It was obviously a Wall Street bets type of thing. But uh, Titanic Hands. There you go. Yeah, we're going to go down with the Titanic. We got Ryan Giffen in the house. We've got to see if you put a video, Ryan. I haven't looked in the last several hours, so did you put a Dodge coin out or what? Dog <laughs> coin? Dodge Doggy coin. coin. Yeah. Um, growth and income. That's a new name, isn't it? Yeah, that is a I new name. That one. Good evening. So is the one everyone. below. What's that? So is the one below. Tamer. Tamer? Yeah, I'm new Tamer. here. Uh, so we don't have to kind of, is that new? Just say it. I'm new. There you go. Join the Discord. It's free. Lots of intelligent folks in there, smarter than me, and, you know, just a little bit less smart than Jerry. But, you know, um, if you have questions and stuff like that, you can go in there and uh, ask questions. You can join a Thursday night chat where we get all get on there and have a big powwow and uh, kind of just, you know, regroup and you know, talk about horror stories and all that. Um, and success stories. <laughs> just this week was just rough. So, uh, and that's just part of the game. You'd have to get to deal with that. I'll still have a pause in a month, I think. Um, you know, just deal with it one expiry at a time. That's all you got to deal with. It. Unless you're, unless you're in a boat where your margin expanded beyond uh, that, where you feel comfortable, then you might have to make some strategic, strategic, take you, take things off strategically. Right. If you have stuff in the green, take that crap off immediately. Right. And then opportunistically. Maybe, yes. Maybe take off some things that are looking really weak, like pins, for example, you know, Spotify, for example, uh, where those things look like they could go down prior to where the pandemic uh, even started. You know, so, you know, I mean, uh, I didn't decide to put I didn't decide to roll pins at all. I just took a three hundred fifty dollar loss on it. You know, it is what it is. So uh, Freedom Seeker, I had to rough. I had a rough, yeah, yeah, we all did. So welcome to the misery boat. Um, stocks and crypto, bumpy. Yeah, everything's bumpy. Uh, it was kind of interesting because in the past, we've kind of like a, uh, kind of like a rotation going on, right? Like tech would get hit. Russell was getting hit. But there was days where my dividend portfolio was up when the whole market, not necessarily the whole market, but Dividend portfolio is up $5,000. I'm like, oh, shoot, what's going on here, you know? Yeah, and the, all the option stuff's down. Um, and then we just had a broad market sell-off, uh, you know, a couple of the days there. Um, like I said, it looked technical if you look at a chart. Futures, yeah, they're down uh, right now. They are down. They were down 100 points earlier, and now they're only down 50. Uh, we got Patrick in the house here. Randy's memorial was there, uh, happened on Saturday. I joined it. I think James joined it. Patrick joined it. I think uh, I think that Knight Rider joined it as well, which I think he's in here. So, yeah, a couple of us joined it. Um, you know, the most interesting part about the memorial, honestly, was just seeing Randy, um, seeing more pictures of Randy. You know what I mean? Like seeing younger photos of Randy. And because uh, I only know Randy for, you know, about, what, 18 months ago. So it's just interesting to see a little bit more of Randy's, you know, life. So that was kind of cool. For sure. Uh, let me see. Oh, it's, yeah, told you, Jerry. Yeah, I knew. Three hours. Three hours, yeah. They don't do daylight savings time, so they're just like Arizona, the FU state. Um, I'm going to put my video out. Okay. 
uh, a lot of family time this weekend. Do what you got to do, Ryan. Uh, go check out Ryan if you're into crypto. He's like uh, he's my he's my go-to for for crypto. Uh, let's see here, um, yeah. What's up, everybody? Alan E. Dale. What's that? Dale Jr. I don't know who that is. Do you? It's a new one. Mm -mm. Yeah, welcome to you, buddy. Welcome. Uh, I know that name. So Gary, I love Gary. <laughs> I loved your last video, uh, yeah, comparing the income ETFs, yeah. So, no, we did not coordinate our videos, by the way. Jerry stole my idea when I told him, <laughs> after I already recorded the video and edited it, I kind of gave him hints of what I was doing, and then he literally came out with the same thing, so. Uh, just to clarify, I had the idea for my video prior. I just didn't know I was going to put it out. And then Dave kind of hinted what he was going to do, and I said, okay, I'll put it out. From now on, he's going to get a really off-the-wall video idea that he thinks I'm going to be doing that's not going to be true. So, good. anyways, yeah, go check out Jerry's video and my video because it's also they kind of they're somewhat linked in a way, but they're not. So, um, the only nice thing about daylight savings is pre-market. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Except mm -hmm. you, uh, pre-market is eight p ten p. Oh, yeah, that's true. Two a.m. here, so. Um, 11, 12, yeah, um, that's cool. The only thing bad about it is you got to, uh, don't you got to stay up really mm -hmm. late? No, it happened. Nah, whatever. I'm getting completely lost. That was like guitar. Sorry. Um, we got a lot more stuff going on here. Uh, we're keeping James waiting in the background here. So let's go ahead and bring James on. And, uh, yeah, let's see this one. Gary, how confident are you? In the, yeah, we'll kind of answer those afterwards. I don't want to keep James waiting. It's like freaking uh, 1 a.m. where he's at. Just kidding. Uh, we got James on here. Hey, welcome to the stream, James. Hey, James. I'm glad you, uh, you know, accepted uh, my invitation last week. Um, you just kind of mentioned it in there, and then I, you know, reached out to you. But we're glad to have you. Um, I know you got a lot of experience, and uh, honestly, I don't know a lot about you. I don't know a lot about your history or anything like that. So it's kind of cool to have you on here. He's not a YouTuber or anything like that. And if he learned anything from what Jerry and I have been talking about, he would keep YouTube like making videos you know, out of his repertoire because it's too much work. And he's like, you know, I don't think you're retired yet, are you? Who, me? Yeah, are you. Re uh, why don't you just introduce yourself uh, and then we'll kind of, uh, we'll, we'll just kind of drill you. But. Uh, introduce no yourself. You know, maybe get a little bit of history on options. Don't go into too much detail because you're gonna let you know ask all my questions right in the intro, right? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We know where you're. We, we know where you live, but if you don't want to share that, you don't have to, right? Yeah, I live in, I live in Florida. Uh, I guess semi-retired right now. Um, I really started trading options and stuff back in 2004. Uh, I took the I, I took the plunge, and luckily it was my sister that had to pay, paid for it. I took the Invest Tools PhD program, which back then was a ridiculous twenty-four thousand um, dollars, and I made all the same mistakes that everybody else made, you know, um, and still make them to this day. And I guess that's why I kind of joined the Discord is to share some of the things that I learned and my mistakes, and uh, you know, did everything that they told you not to do nowadays. Everything you, we were buying options, you know, looking at every pattern. Uh, that was the first I, thing I was going to just ask you. Did you start out buying premium? Yeah, you start out buying premium, looking at every chart. And I probably have over 10,000 hours. If I calculate all the hours I've spent watching TV, looking at charts and everything, it's at least 10,000 hours over the years. So I've learned, you know, made a lot of mistakes, made a lot of money and lost a lot of money. You know, I went through 2008, way too big, like everybody else here. So I, I feel for some of the people that are on the program that, you know, get too big. And I always caution you. You know, diversify, diversify, diversify. You know, I usually have on a lot of non-correlated stuff. Like I'll have oil on, I'll have gold on, I'll have tech on, I'll have, and I try to keep them all the same size about, you know, it'll be one or two contracts of everything. I don't try to get 10 contracts of one thing and two contracts. I made those mistakes early on. You know, you get 10 contracts and all of a sudden it goes against you. You can't offset it with, uh, five contracts of one, you know, it just doesn't right. work. That way. Um, but you started in 2004. So that's, I don't know, four years, five years before I did. 
mm -hmm. with options. Obviously, you might be just a few years older than me. But, and so I would say also, you know, I start, my very first option was a, was buying premium as well with a company that went bankrupt. Okay. So it was, it was GM, by the way. Right. Um, so this program that you took this $24,000 of you, what you yeah, said it was, it was, to go back, give you a little history, uh, invest tools was the name of the company. Um, and it actually was bought out by Thinkorswim. Okay. So Thinkorswim bought out, um, that I think in 2009 and also profit charts, which was Tim Knight formed a company called profit charts, which invest tools used. They then bought profit charts in about 2011. And that's the now thinkorswim charts. So there were two charting programs back then you had profit charts and thinkorswim charts, which was TV America. And you could use either one of the two. And okay. then they were bought. Out. So like I said, I've been, on the thinkorswim platform since 04 and then went through all of that and then when they when they uh tom and them started the new company tasty trade i started and opened two accounts with them as well because i still like the thinkorswim and i didn't know how the platform was going to happen on the um tasty trade and also they didn't have all the functionality on tasty trade they didn't have futures they didn't have all everything working yet you know because they kind of launched it and then gradually built up. They had zero charting on Tasty Trade when it first came out. So why did you, so you still prefer TastyWorks, Tasty Trade or whatever, Tasty, Tasty Trade or what, TastyWorks is the app or the, the platform. You still prefer that over Thinkorswim or is just you no, like I to actually, hang out? With... I actually still prefer Thinkorswim just yeah. because it has so much more functionality. I think um, the more advanced you are, and I talk to you a lot about beta waving your portfolio and stuff, right. you know, they both do it, but the visualization in thinkorswim is just so much further advanced because you can see the, your, your, your curve of your profit in the, in, for your entire portfolio rather than just one underlying. You so know? you're using so, that for your analysis and you're actually doing the trading in Tastyworks? Yeah. Yeah. So because you can put all your positions at the same time, let's say in the, in the uh, platform, you can say if the if the S and P is going to be between four oh seven and four thirty five, I'm still going to make money on the entire portfolio because you've weighted all your positions against that, and it allows you to graphically see all that. Okay. So, it's, so, why, so why did you go back to TastyWorks? I guess. I, you know, they were very easy to use um, for the beginners and stuff, and I wanted to see what it would do, and I wanted to see how they build it out. So it's very easy and i'm really just now getting all back into it again because i've been working I'm, i basically do it when i'm not working as many hours as i used to work and so consequently i'm really back into it now <clears throat> this is your full-time job it's my full-time job now yeah yeah nice. um do you have any uh, uh i'm gonna say it but you know i mean it's su it sucks that we do this but do you have any monthly goals like $2,000, $5,000, 2% or anything like that? Yeah. So for this month, I said I wanted to make $3,000. It was this month's goal. Okay. Okay. Now, and how have you done so far this year? Yeah. And I use that based on the theta decay that I'm selling and how much I'm going to sell versus what the risk I'm going to do it and what the beta weighting of my portfolio is and saying, all right, based on the size of the portfolio, I should be able to make $3,000 this month. You know? Okay. Yeah. $3,000, not chump change folks. Um, yep. you know, I don't know what your account side is. I don't know if you've shared it and you don't have to share it if you don't want to. Um, you know, I mean, obviously when you retire, cause you said you're semi-retired, are you going to just do this full time? You get to dump more money in and try to make more money or is it just, you want to keep it the way it is? No, I wanted to do it full time and I got additional money I wanted to dump in. I just wanted to show that I can make, 3,000 this month, 4,000 the following month, 5,000 the following month, and then, I, I, you know, and then say, all right, now I'm fine. Okay. So you're, you're planning on doing that this year? Yeah. 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 So you're, and I know, because we've talked a lot, uh, well, I mean, somewhat, we've talked pretty, pretty substantial, I'd say. Um, you do a lot of naked calls too. So, yeah. which is great. I mean, we, we got, Sherry and I got away from them. I really should get back into doing them again, but so you're kind of making money on the downside too, right? right? Like, yep. and that, that's key. If you're trying to, 
you know, make that $3,000, you know, kind of consistently every month, right? Yeah. Uh, you got to be able to make money on those down moves for those weeks like we had to, you know, this week. So um, I know I want to bring up Jade Lizards too, because you and I have talked about that. Mm -hmm. You, when you put your, when you put your strangles on, you don't put them on as a Jade Lizard right away, right? No, I, I almost all my strangles are naked. You know, you're calling them selling naked calls. It's really a strangle. I'll sell a put in a call basically at the same time. Okay. And if I'm if I'm worried about the stock, meaning that I'm not real familiar with it, or I think it has a chance to you know go to the moon, or you know has a chance for a big up move, then I'll do a, um, a sell a call spread on the top side and a naked put on the bottom side. You do that from the get go, then. I'll do that from the get go. Okay. Yep. Is, is there a situation one? where? Go ahead. Is there a situation where you have a strangle on and then you'll add the other side to make the make the spread no. down the road. No, you've by never that time, done that. By the time it's gone against you and you're paying more for the, for the protection. Yeah, that's what I figured. Okay. It's just wanted to clarify that. Cause I thought on the Thursday night, one time you mentioned that you turned it into a Jade lizard. Um, I guess you could do that with an iron condor too, I suppose. But um, so if anybody doesn't know what a Jade lizard is, it's basically just a, a naked put. And then it's just a call spread on the top side to kind of, define your risk per se, right? Instead of having unlimited risk to the upside, which is, the, you know, the biggest concern of having a naked call on, uh, even a strangle doesn't help you. I mean, you're going to, you're going to lose on the bottom. So you're going to make money on the bottom side, but the top side will, will blow you out. Right. Uh, we've always been doing strangles just because it's kind of almost free to put the other side on. It's a great way to make money on the downside when the market goes down. But if things go, you know, <laughs> Go swimmingly well, then you could get blown out on the top side. Um, so, so that's explain, explain the explain the call spread. What does that consist of? All right, so it, it's really kind of easy, and Dave was kind of covering it. And ideally, where the true jade lizard is, is you make enough of the premium you sold so that you have no risk to the upside. So let's say you're selling a three dollar call spread, right? You want the, the credit for the call spread. So let's say stock is trading at 100. You want to sell the 110, 115. So you got $5 of risk to the upside, right? You need to sell the put and the call spread for $5 to basically cover the risk on the upside. So usually you'll do them $3 wide and stuff like that. And, and maybe you don't get the full thing covered, but you may get $2.90 with a $3 wide spread on the upside. So worst loss is on the upside is $10. Right? Yeah. Words, you are also, if you go through your top strike, you're going to lose three bucks, but you took $2.90 in on the credit. Now, just also for anybody that's here in the chat to preference this and basically say what he's doing here he is basically uh he's kind of moving the spread down a little bit too where if he just stuck a, a naked call on he could go a little bit wider right so you know he's looking at a chart looking at where the 52 week high is or looking where or, you know normally i think you're doing these almost on big stocks right that aren't going to move you know five or ten percent in a week or two weeks or three weeks or something like that just like we always talk about when you do uh, like an iron condor, you really can't, you know, the wing's got to be closer, right? Then it is doing just a strangle on its own, right? So it's the same thing here, really. When you put a, a spread on, you're not going to be as wide as you could get if you just stuck on the naked side, right? So uh, it'd be interesting to hear more about which ones you're doing it on, too. Um, I still think I'd probably just throw the naked call on or strangle, right? Because I can go wider on it, um, yeah. You know. But I, I do. I like to have that tool in my shed, though. For a stock, you're maybe just a little like, eh, you know, like you define your risk or actually cut so, the risk down to zero, right? Or take a look at your on your chart at Roblox, RBLX right now. Roblox, right? Roblox, right? So it's a new issue. I think it's been out what six, seven months. I don't have my chart right in front of me. Six or seven months. It had earnings coming up. It's only been is it roadblocks? It's only been out for two months. Uh, RBLX. RBLX. So I was worried about the upside, right? Because it basically the, the IPO price was around sixty dollars, and it went to eight grand eighty three, right? 
so I was saying I'd own it at 60. So I sold the, the, the 60 call in one account. I sold a 50, uh, I'm sorry, a 60 put in one account, a 50 put in another account. But on the top side, I sold the 9100. Because I didn't want it to jump forty dollars on the top side. So this is roadblocks, right? We're yeah. just to confirm. Okay, so that yeah, that's a brand new IPO, like literally a month and a half, two months ago. Right, two months. Uh, so ninety one hundred. Yeah, that's like that's a brand new high if it got up that high. Correct. But yeah. anything. But it also hit the eighty what eighty three dollars in the first ten days, the twenty days. Correct. Correct. Right. So who knows what can happen? And it hadn't had its first earnings release till this week. And even on earnings, it went from what sixty-five to seventy-eight in a day. So it went thirteen dollars. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a tough one. That that actually would be a good candidate for a Jade Lizard because it's yeah. such a, yeah. it's so it's so new, right? And it's like yeah. I mean, it's got a lot of hype. It's kind of spec, right? It is, it is. But it had so much volatility in it, you know. I mean, I think I and I didn't get the full whip, but I think I got five fifty or something for it, you know, when I did it. So at least covered worst risk is four hundred fifty bucks, you know. But I sold it for five fifty. So what are your go to? I know you've gave me some pretty good ones, um, pretty good, uh, you know, uh, tickers and all that. And you both you and I got into FireEye last week, which we can talk about. But what what's your go to? What what are your now What's I'm doing a lot of, you I'm always doing a lot of these indexes because when you're naked, the indexes make it easy. It's easier to be naked on an index because it's going to move slower. Yeah. You also have the ability to widen it out. You don't you not collect as much, but you can widen it out and feel a little more comfortable and be able to sleep at night. Right? Yeah. Um, I look for a lot of high IVs. That's one of the first things I look for. I look for a lot of high IVs, and I'm usually selling the 75 to 80 delta. 75 to 80. Okay. That's probably a little bit more aggressive than me. Yeah. That's number but style. I'm looking for support, you know, as well. So when I do this, and I may do it, you know, unbalanced, I may look for a, a 70 on one side and 85 on the other side. Yeah. So when you're talking about the 75, 80, that's on ETFs or is that on just pretty much everything? That's pretty much everything. The ETFs have been going wider. I've been going 90 on the ETFs, like the SPY and the IWM and stuff. Okay. So and I've also been varying the, the expirations. So I have like the next, I have four periods of spiders and IWMs and QQQs on. You know, I'll have some this week that I always went ahead because they're going to expire worthless. They should. Um, and then I have two weeks out and then I have June 18th and June 25th, I think it is now. Yeah, those three are like my top three I always have on. <laughs> Yeah, I am. I'm a big fan of IWN now. And yeah, now. I have all three of those on. So, so uh, I, have, I have. I probably have two to four contracts of each one of those, depending on different expirations. Buy-in power. Buy-in. Jeez, uh, got a cracky voice here. Um, so buy-in power. You try to stay around forty, 40 to fifty, or you lower. I, I, I'll do 40 to 50. I think I hit 50 last week on the down move, but I was 35 going into it. Well, you hit higher than 50 because I remember calling you out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I say that. You're right. You called me out on it. But when I, I deposited um, like $20,000 in one of the accounts, and the buying power wasn't didn't show up there yet. So well, I was, okay. I gotcha. all, it was in my net lick, but it wasn't in the, the buying power not used. The only reason I called him out, folks, is he called me out when mine got to 57%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like it, I like it. Yeah, but it's, I don't mind it when the volatility spiked up to be 35, 45%. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, it I, expands I was, fast. Was, like, really, overnight, you wake up, oh, shoot, you know, 54%. I was just 47 or whatever, you know, so it expands fast. A big well, down. It expands fast, depending on what margin you're using, and also your deltas expand fast. And so I, I looked at one day on the first down move, my beta wave deltas were 84 because I track it every single day. By the end of that night, I was you know so I'm basically 84 short shares long of the spider. By the end of that night, I was 150. By the end of the next night, I was 248 shares long. So that as it went down, I'm getting longer and longer, which is why your buying power is going down. So that's the benefit of beta wave. Say, wait a second, I'm way too long here, and then I'll put on some short positions. 
So DTE wise, I think you're probably, what are you doing? Like 30 to 45 days mostly? Usually put them on 30 to 45, take them off 50% profit, 60% profit or 21 days, 15 days. I got a couple of seven days out there that are just on the, on the uh, IWM that are going to expire this week because they're 30 points away on each side. And I just started doing that too, 45 days out. So I can hopefully get out of them before what is it's Vega, right? Vega kind of, could uh, could screw you quickly in the last you know last week or something. Or hopefully, you can get it off before then, right? Yep. Yeah, you should be rolling them. You should be rolling them at least by fourteen days. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't even call it rolling though, because it's you're right. You're just, taking them off, put new ones on. <laughs> but yeah, that's all a roll is, folks. Yeah. You can um, the old ones and put new ones in. So you, you're usually going to roll a lot though, because you're like, okay, the stock just went down ten bucks. You literally will roll your calls right down 10 bucks, won't you? Like you'll just take the yeah. profit and roll down another 10 bucks. You're kind of like an elevator that's going up and down, right? That's yeah. why I mean, it's really not a roll because you're going to re reestablish your new, how far away you want to be from the current price and what your new deltas are going to be. Yeah. I mean, I think Jerry's even talked about it in one of his videos because some people get that confused. They think a roll is, they think it's all attached to one another, right? Like, oh, I roll this contract and it's somehow attached to the other one or whatever. And I thought the same thing, you know, about 10 years ago. Um, might've been a little bit longer than 10 years ago. I didn't know what a roll was, but yeah, it's just buying the contract back and selling a new one. That's all it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's new contracts every time. Another thing that I really do is I try to vary all my strategies. I don't, I don't just do one strategy. You know, I have butterflies on. I have some calendars on. I actually buy some put spreads. I've bought put spreads, you know, um, do a lot of iron condors. On the, on the larger stocks, I'll do an iron condor. Um, so like Amazon to the world, stuff like that? Yeah, I don't do Amazon that much. But just anything over 300 bucks, I'll usually do an iron condor just because they can move, move a lot, you know. Um, I mean, so that's an interesting thing because I'm I'm a I'm not I'm kind of against iron condors. Why would I do that when I just put a strangle on that's way wider than the iron condor and it make is. more money, right? Yes. I mean, Tom Snaws off whatever. He talks about the same thing. Like, why would I want to put a spread on when I can just do naked, right? right. And it's way wider, make twice, three times the amount of money. It's you just know? take less buying power. Are you with the pattern? Yeah, well, it's smaller account than I understand, but so. When you put your iron condors on, are you doing individual legs? Or are you putting no. spreads on individually? Or are you just doing iron condor, iron condor all in one shot? I put it all on at one time. You have I've any issues with spreads at all? Very often. Huh? I've been, I've, I've heard reports of people having fill issues when they've been putting on iron condors and stuff. No, I never have a problem. Don't ever have a problem. Can but you? Because you know, Jerry kind of mentioned this one time. When you put an iron condor on, you're really you're not getting the best price for everything, all those individual legs, right? Versus putting on individual legs, you have, you're controlling the price, right? So you'd have to, I think you'd have to play with it. I don't think you were getting any better a price because, and I, and I made, I made that mistake this week. I tried to, on the big down move, I went and tried to sell the, I was trying to sell the call and the put at the same time at two different times. Well, it turns out my call got, my call got filled and then the stock started running up and my put never got filled. And it was $60. I was $60 at a loss before the, before it. So I just had to put the put on, um, later so unequal. I was already $60 down on yeah. my call by not putting it on together because it was, I, I see you there. So eh, I know I've just heard other people say, um, cause I don't do a lot of spreads. I don't do iron condors or anything like that. Usually, even when I put my strangles on, they're separate, right? I don't even do a bag order for those. But you know, when I put my iron condors on, I'll just tell it the price. If it doesn't fill, it doesn't fill. So if it's not a third, the width of the strikes, I don't even buy it. Won't, it won't, doesn't fill, then it doesn't fill. So, you know, you're saying I want the best price. Well, if you're trying to get, let's say, let's say it's a $3 wide. And if, if I'm not getting a buck or a buck 10, I'm not putting it on. So I'll put it for a buck or a buck 10 and they can fill all four legs at that price or not. Hmm. You know? Well, that's, uh, uh, this is interesting here are the people's strategies. So when did you finally flip to selling premium? Oh, shit. When did you find the, 
oh man, this is a complete game changer versus buying yeah. premium. Well, probably, probably seven, eight years ago. Okay, so because I did the same thing you did, start out buying premium, day traded buying premium. By the way, lost ten grand, made ten grand, lost ten grand, made ten grand. And we're talking like in a one week period, right? And uh, and that was back when Apple had minis. By the way, you mm -hmm. remember mini contracts for Apple, but um, and then it's like, and I knew about selling premium, but I just didn't know, you know, how to manage it. Didn't know, really know that there was kind of like a it's like a cult following or whatever. It's it's a it's a game changer. It's a I think Thumper likes to say a cheat code for life, right? No. Once you learn that side, it's like wow, I can be wrong and I'm still right. You know what I mean? And then you put all the risk on the other side where people got to buy it and put all those things we always talk about here: direction, timing, and uh, and the ticker. You know, literally got to be all right pretty much at the same time to, for them to make money. Right, put that all in your favor. So that, that's just an interesting thing. Did you kind of just come across that by chance or what? No, it's from way, watching Tasty Trade for so many years. I mean, I watched them since the day they opened. You know what I mean? Okay, well, I first uh, my first interaction with Tasty Trades. I've been using Thinkorswim since. I only opened it because because of Tasty Trades, honestly, uh, because of the probability of the money. It's the only platform that had it at the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I found out I found them through uh, Karen the Super Trader. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you've probably heard of her, but yeah. they interviewed her, and that's when I, I think it was 2015 or something like that is when I heard about um, her, and then I started following Tasty Trade. So it was interesting um, to hear that story. But um, yeah, same story. You know, I mean, I, and I and I've done futures. I've done gold futures. I've done the Nasdaq. I've tried to scalp the Nasdaq and the SPX, not the SPX, but the ES. Yes. I've done I've done a lot of scalping back and forth on the on the futures. I think so. So I've done the same thing. I used to day trade stocks. I used to day trade um, ES futures. Only ES futures. Never did any other futures. And honestly, all that type of stuff kind of just helps in a way, right? You learn how to chart. You learn how. You learn patterns. You learn. One minute, so you learn, you know, five minute, you learn 15 minute, you learn one, uh, you know, 60 minute, you know, the daily charts, all that stuff kind of just helps, right? So it's kind of being well rounded in different areas, different ways. Um, and this all helps. It literally transitions or transfers down to selling premium on options because I use all that stuff I learned over the years to, you know, basically uh, do what, what, what I'm doing now. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's similar to my job in a way. So I think it gets uh, to the point that it just clicks. You know what I mean? It's like you do it, you do it, you do it. And I still watch a lot of videos today. And it's like, and you'll get, and I think Jerry, you said it the other day, you'll get one little nugget. You watch a 20 minute yeah. video, and that one little nugget says, aha. I didn't, I didn't realize that was the piece I was missing. You know what I mean? It was that one little nugget. And it was like, sometimes you go back and rewind it to hear what he said that one piece was. Or whoever said it was like, man, I wish I had known that piece earlier. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of times it's just not thing. Because so for anybody that's in the chat here or watches this replay, I know like this much of options. There's so anytime I watch a Tasty Trades, you know, video, I'm like, I don't know that much. You know what I mean? Compared to what these guys know. Yeah. And, you know, like I said last week or whatever, it's like a 20 minute video. It's normally just, you know, it's one or two minutes worth of real good information in there. And the rest is just bickering back and forth. But those guys know a lot of stuff. And do you need to know that? You don't. You don't really need to know that. You need to know the basics um, and just start small, start easy, start, you know, with a with a cast secured put on a stock you don't mind owning. That's what we always say. Cover call is a good way to start, too. Right. That's what yeah. I like to tell people too, is just, uh, you know, take it one step at a time, you know, try to figure out one thing and then move on. Uh, I, I think a lot of people try to just, oh, I can do this and that and this and that and throw it all in there in a pot. And then, you know, they really don't know what each thing is doing. And uh, I think it's nice to, to kind of master each step. So you do cover I think that's what James has done. Yeah. Do you have a dividend portfolio or anything like that? Yeah. So I trade I trade actually four different accounts, five if you count it as one last one, but basically four active accounts and one not so active account. Um, so yeah, I have a dividend Roth, then I have 
the trading accounts that two Ross, one for my wife, one for me, and then the uh, two trading accounts and then another Schwab, which I consider my spec speculation account, which just has like 25 grand in it. Um, you know, it's interesting. One of the things that I really saw on Tasty Trading, because you haven't watched that much of it, where if you go back and look at the where do I start videos was when Tom taught his daughter to trade. And you know, you start about, you talk about starting small and getting, just getting started. It starts when he taught her how to open an account. So there's like one thing on just opening an account. Then the next thing is you got to put one trade on. We're not going to end this session until you put one trade on. And then every week she had to do one trade. So it was, a, it was amazing how, trying to train somebody how to trade and she was like so afraid so afraid so afraid and that was what it was and then you know that's what nick did with his son and I, uh, with the bat did with his son nick he did the second where do i start series was teaching his son how to trade so if you actually follow those series it starts with them opening an account the first time and how scary that's brilliant that is brilliant for anybody that has kids here jerry i don't have any kids but if i did they'd be because you're getting them used to the emotions too, you know what I mean? Losing money, making, I mean, it's because it's, it's mostly an emotional game really. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't taught any of this stuff. I'm all self-taught and all this stuff. Nobody showed me or anything. You just got to go through it sometimes. But in Jerry's son invests, by the way, but you got to give him an options, man. Yeah, I probably should. <laughs> He'd probably be good at it too. Yeah. If you watch those series, and I guess you reach out to some people that are, are watching, you know, if they reach out and go back to those series because they're all archived out there, and it's week one through whatever twenty five, and it's how, and then then it's how do they fix them, you know, because trades didn't go right. So then it's how did how, what they did to fix them, what they roll them, did they just finally get out, what, whatever they did to fix those trades. So this is an interesting question here because you've been following them for a long time, and I've watched. You know, their videos over the last five, six years, just off and on, catch this, this, and that. And honestly, lately, I'd say the last month or two, I've watched more of their videos than I've ever watched before. Um, there's some stuff that I just don't agree with that they talk, that they say, that they suggest, whatever. Is there anything that you don't agree with that what they say? You know, I don't ever think of that. I don't agree with it. Um, I guess I just never have thought about it. I'm sure there's, all, there's always something that somebody says that I don't agree with. You know what I mean? But I, right. never said, I, never, I can't remember anything that they said that I didn't agree with. Well, their PMCCs, for example, PMCCs that they're talking about, they they like put them on very short term. They're thinking very short term. Right. Now, granted, when, you know, I mean, obviously, we all want to make money the very next day at a PMCC and get rid of it, right? But they're, they're uh, I want to say their long calls were, did they even do leaps? I don't even think they did uh, leave. It was like it was three months, six months? Yeah, two or three months they go out, and then they do one month. Yeah, they're not looking to tie up their money long term. Yeah. Well, I'm not either. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's just interesting. It was just a question to ask just because you have a lot of experience with them in general. Um, and a lot of uh, – most of the time, just a lot of the stuff just goes over my head anyway. So, like you said, I just pick up a little nugget here and there. Um, you don't got to learn all this stuff. I mean, honestly, the Greeks, you don't even really need to know the Greeks, honestly, when you're buying, when you're selling premium, you can get away with Delta and about it. But, you know, I use probably the money mostly, but honestly, I'd say the last few weeks, it's mostly just been doing Delta. I don't even care. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Point, point one. All right. I'm throwing that one on, you know, and then it comes into my spreadsheet because I calculate the probability of money when I put the trade on. And then usually the probability is a little higher than what the delta is. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's a good approximation. Very close. Yeah. And, and delta changes so fast that within four hours you put the trade on, it's already changed plus or minus. You know. Oh yeah, theta as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out new. I know you sent me some spreadsheets and stuff, and I'm trying to add more more stuff to the spreadsheets, more stuff to my scripts. To track that, because you know, it's like you watch, you watch Tasty Works, Tasty Trades. I always get those two messed up. They're talking about you know theta efficiency. They're talking about theta decay, theta efficiency, buying power. Of this, but I'm like, you know, tell me how I can use this to better maximize my buying power. You know what I mean? 
-hmm. And it's normally just, uh, it's kind of just all convoluted. You really don't go into great detail about it. Or you have to know a lot more than I know to probably understand that stuff, right? A lot of it's proprietary formulas, it seems like, too. Like, like they, they came up with this. Nobody else does it. Well, I think you took a look at that one sheet I sent you two weeks ago, which is basically talking about based on your theta and the size of your account, how much you should keep of that number. Right. But it had like a t they have a T row on there or, T -row. or whatever. Yeah. With trow or whatever. T R O C, I think they call yeah, it. Yeah, with this trademark by them, by the way. Yeah. But I thought about throwing that in the script too, you know, because it's kind of cool to have all these new metrics in there, but all the metrics are useless if you don't know how to use them. You know, so it's all about learn how to use them. How can I, you know, and Jerry and I talked about this a week or two ago or whatever about how can I maximize my buy-in power, which it was never something ever done, but he's been doing it almost the whole time. And Jerry's like, well, if I had an account your size, I wouldn't do it at all. So it was just, it's just interesting, you know, how we're like, uh, I don't understand what he's doing, but he doesn't understand where I'm coming from. But why not try to maximize your buy-in power, right? I think I think that you should that people should look at how much theta they have. I think, and you're always kind of looking at that. How much theta do you have on to the size of your account? Because if you have too much theta on for a small account, you could then you have way too much risk risk on. Because the premium you're collecting is risk on the other side. You know what I mean? So that's gonna be about point one to point. Point one, one, point two, point two, three, yeah. point three. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't think I've ever been as high as point two, but one point five at the most, I think. Yeah. You know, and I know that I think that there's probably, and I haven't seen their numbers, but I'm sure some of the people that are watching or that are in the room have a lot more than that on. Um, yeah, we've, emotions, we've you know, come across the people in the Discord last week that are just put themselves in a weird bind playing risky stocks with way too many contracts and uh you know i mean we're we're, we're here to ask questions or help with whatever we know right um you know honestly i haven't really had to deal with anything really drastically bad you know I, i've just i got that out of my system you know years ago you know what i mean so you know when people watch these streams listen to what we say <laughs> <laughs> don't play through earnings right? it's the it's the you know hitting singles you know you don't have to hit home runs uh what i always say is trade small i think that's a tasty work thing trade small trade often yeah it is well I'll trade often i don't even know if they, <laughs> going out 45 days is not trading often <laughs> no but i mean if like i said if, if a trade gives you you know 30 percent profit in in a few hours or a day take it and let's look look somewhere else, you know. Don't don't sit there and wait forty five days for the other part. So, uh, you know, it's just it's just taking those, not getting, you know. I don't put one or most I usually put on is two contracts at once. I, I, I like to put on one, and then if something happens, then I can man. It's easier to manage that way. Uh, when you're putting on 10 contracts of this and seven contracts of that, and it goes against you, like James was saying, that you don't have much option there. You don't, you don't, you don't have much flexibility there anymore. So I think it's, I think that's out? really important. <laughs> huh? Yeah. I said, you call me out? <laughs> yeah. So uh, to point and work through some numbers, right? So it's $30 of theta decay on, right? You take that times 360 days and you've got basically, uh, 30 times 360, you have 10,800. If you have a $50,000 account, that's a 22.5% return. So if you have 50 or $60 on for a $50,000 account, you shouldn't be making a 50 to 60% return. So you probably have too much risk. Uh, yeah, well, I do some positions with 10 contracts, but honestly, they're solid companies. Yeah. And I don't even mind owning them, honestly. Like TQQQ, it's not even a company, but I want to own TQQQ at thirty-five or fifty bucks. Yeah, but the I'll take it at fifty, and I'll take it at thirty-five, right? The difference um, is the size of your account. Yeah, right. you yeah. can afford it. That, that's what I'm saying. So you can, you know, and that's another thing is when you look at the notional value, you take 
take TQ, the TQQQ, let's say, I think you bought the 35, right? Or sold the 35. So you take 50 and 35, yeah. You take 35 times the thousand shares, you put $35,000 out there, right? That's basically your max rent loss, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna see that. So maybe you got five to ten thousand dollars in loss max if it goes down to thirty or twenty-eight, twenty-five, something like that. A lot of people on the here may not be able to hold that ten thousand dollar loss. To you, it's not a big deal. No, right? well, I would I want to buy the TQQQ down at thirty-five. I mean, yeah. back yeah. in March twenty twenty, it reached what sixteen bucks or something like that. Seventeen, so. yeah. Seventeen. So I mean thirty-five I think would be a great time to <laughs> I don't think it's going to get there. So it's almost like free premium at this point. But if it gets there, it gets there. I want to buy it anyway, right? So, yeah, I mean. But to your point, to go back to your point is, is that, or my point was, that's $35,000. If there, your account can hold a $35,000 of one stock, if people don't have $35,000, they wouldn't want 10 contracts on because they wouldn't want one stock. Now that's right. all they have. They have nothing else they can do. If they had a $35,000 account, they're stuck. And that's where the people get in trouble is that it's they have it all in one stock because even if they want to own all one, you just want one company. Well, there's somebody in the Discord, I don't remember who it was, you know, I can't reminding me of the chat, but saying, Oh, I uh, I got like twenty contracts on in this, and I'm like, because it equals seventy thousand dollars, and that's how much I normally do on this in one contract. So I'm like, so you just bought like twenty contracts on this company because it's the normal amount you put into like an Apple or an, a Microsoft or something like that. It didn't make any sense. You know, it's like, that's a lot of risk right there to put in a smaller company. Um, I, yeah, I think knowing your risk is the right thing to do here. Uh, I'll put 10 contracts on a Microsoft. You know what I mean? Like it's, is it risky? It's not as risky as doing 10 contracts on a roadblocks. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just, uh, it is what it is. You have to, you know, size appropriately for this, the ticker it is, the type of con or the type of company it is. Correct. That's, that, that's the key is in for your account size, you know, and account size. Absolutely. I, do, I do a lot of ones and twos, you know? Yeah. So do I, um, like a Spotify at a pins. Like I wouldn't put two of those on probably just because the type of company it is, you know, um, I think it, yeah, I mean, we do a lot of similar stuff as far as the type, but you know, you, you reached out to me and said, yeah, I bought a fire. Eye leap and you know, I'm like, all right, I'll go in there with you. I don't care if I lose, you know, I don't even, it wasn't a lot of money. 570 bucks or something. I think as well. Let me see. Where's that fire. Oh. Eye at? it was $470 yeah. and, uh, when does that expire? Oh, so it's a it's a basically eighteen months left on it. So you know the way I look at it is eighteen months, five hundred dollars risk. Even if I lose it all, like that's not that bad at all, right? That's just a drop in a bucket to what I make on a month to month basis usually. So it's just a little bit of risk out there, playing a different side. You know, it kind of keeps things interesting because it can get boring. I think at times. Yeah. That's why, I, that's why I do all the different strategies. I usually will look at the stock and say, what can I do differently rather than just do a strangle? You know, what else makes sense on this one? You know? It sucks to say it bo oh, it's boring at times because I think that's where people get in trouble and they start doing way riskier stuff, trying to make money fast. When honestly, this is one of the quickest ways to build wealth, in my opinion. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, I mean, if the market goes up 20% a year, you should be able to, to double that because... The market's going up. You're making money faster, right? Like people don't get that. When the market goes up, you can just take off stuff faster, put new shit on. You know, so you should be able to double what the market's doing pretty easily, I'd say. Yeah, I think I think the other thing people need to very vary their watch list. You know, I, I looked at probably 50, 50, 60 different new issues. Not not new issues, but new ones today for a new screener that I'd never looked at before, and I saw a lot of interesting patterns, and it's like. Like, man, I've never heard of these companies, you know, and a lot of them are, you know, long dated companies, long histories, long charts, and they're doing interesting things. And then I look for the option volume to see, are people playing the options in them? You know, what's the open interest? What's the volume on them? And there's about four of them. You know, I, I do like a, 
neutral watch list, a bearish watch list, and a bullish watch list. So I call it the bear pen, bull pen, and neutral. <laughs> and, I and I just put the different signals in which one, and I set alerts on my on every one of those to say if it does this, and the alerts, which you can, if you use Thinkorswim a lot, you can put notes on the alerts. So when the alert comes, it tells you exactly what you were thinking when you did it. So you can say, you know, if you say, let's say a stock is at whatever 1150, and you think the breakout's at 1205, you can set alert for 1205, and in the notes say, look for a breakout at above the prior high or something. So when the alert comes, it tells me exactly what I wanted to do. I find those really nice. And the reason why, if you look at a chart, anybody, the reason why we put on fire eyes, just look at a chart. It literally looks like it's going to break out. If not, it already broke out. Like it's above the 20 and the 50 at this point. Yeah. So it is kind of sitting right at a trend line. But I mean, so it, it's kind of, you know, it's flagging out. Kind of looks like it's coiling up to bust through. The 20 and 50 which like it's you know i'm looking at finviz it looks like it's already above it so it's just looked like a high probability trade versus you know it didn't require me to put a lot of capital out there to take this trade on you know what i mean like it, it goes up uh we'd love to get out of it at uh i don't know we'll see 22 maybe <laughs> you put more contracts on than i did though make it puts at the 19 and i have a covered call at 22. so i have yeah. Three, there again. So in that one thing, I have one leap, three naked puts, and one covered call. You doing a PMCC on it? Uh, no, I, I did. Yeah, I did. I just did a covered a buy right or a covered call, but I only did oh, one month. Right, okay. Kind of do Jerry's wheeling. Did you do Jerry's wheeling? It's the second month I've wheeled it. <laughs> yeah, I, this is the well. I'm wheeling. I don't, I, I'm not even going to say that because I'm not really going to wheel RK. I got assigned. I had no intention to taking it originally. I took the stock, saw the cover calls, and then I don't plan on, you know, taking it again, right? Like I don't have, I don't want to be assigned, but I thought it was a good one to do and to try something new, uh, yeah. keep myself entertained. <laughs> so, what is this fire eye? Is it, uh, did you, no, your, your RK expires, what, this week? They do government security for, um, like, uh, yeah, for, for just stuff on, uh, whatever you want to call it, the, the cyber security. Cyber security, yes, exactly. That's right. That's yeah, I'm where familiar I'm, with it. I've heard of the name in the IT space, but it's it's a somewhat right. small company too. Yeah, I also think it's a takeover possible takeover candidate, which is why I do and did the leak. IV yeah. is not really that high on it either. I mean, I say it's it's what like showing. I'm looking at a 13 IV, by the way. That's the 13 week, so it's like 32. Which uh, IV do you look at? I use the one that's on the Tastyworks platform usually, which is really close to the one on the um, Thinkorswim platform. The problem with them though is it because 8.9 is it showing? Because interactive brokers will say if they have a 13 week, they had a 52 week, they have IV rank, they got IV percent, IV percentage. Like yeah. you never know which one Tasty Works is using. They're using the last 52 weeks. So they're using 52 week IV, yeah. IV rank. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are you seeing? I what are you seeing on FireEye right now? I'm just curious. 8.9. 8.9. That's super low, isn't it? Yeah. Which is which is why you would do a call. You wouldn't really sell premium at eight nine. Okay, I'll uh, I'll switch mine to fifty two week and see if it goes to about eight point nine. So you you I mean we all started doing that, going through our our uh, scanners or whatever, looking for high V stuff, and then we kind of stopped doing that. So I don't I don't even really do it. I do have a lot of stuff on my watch list that I kind of just look at every day. There's always stuff that I have that is, you know, QQQ, SPY, you know, IWM, um, TQQQs are some of my, you know, what, TNA is another one I've been doing lately. Uh, do you ever do any ones on the VIX at all? Do not do the VIX. I've done it in the past. Don't have done anything. I saw somebody who made some money out the other day on a platform. 
that IV on the thinker swim at six percent. So for a fire eye? Yeah, six versus eight point nine. Eight point nine is six percent. Okay, I'll write that down to see if um, if IB is close. And the tasty works is what they call IV rank rather than IV percentile. And they take the top about the high and the low of the last fifty two weeks and then rank them from one to hundred. Okay. That's how they do it. Yeah, I'm familiar with it on uh, on Think or Swim, but they always used. I thought they used always Ivy rank, but they use Ivy percentile on uh, Think or Swim. It's under the option statistics, it's under the trade page. Do you look at? Uh, do you care about market cap at all, or you don't really care? I look for volume being over five hundred thousand shares a day to start with, and I look at how much volume's out there. You know, I was looking. If there's not two or three hundred uh, open interest, I'm not playing it. And if the spreads are too wide, I'm not playing it. Hmm. You know, I'm Do not. You look at short interest. And I think Jerry, I think you said last week you were saying oh, the spreads are too wide. You know, it's, uh, if it's 40, 50, 60 cents wide, if it's a three hundred dollar stock, that's okay. But it's your fifty dollar stock. If it's more than ten cents wide, I'm not doing it because you're going to give away ten cents on each side on the in and the out. It's not worth it. I don't think I look at it that that big. I mean, definitely on the leaps. If I'm buying leaps, I definitely look at it. But um, I don't normally care because, of course, I'm not really trading the stuff that I feel is probably would have it's, a big spread. Probably it's stock dependent, though. Like yeah. Uh, yeah. I've traded Okta for a while, and they, they, those spreads are pretty wide, and that's a big stock. Um, and it's and it's sometimes a pain in the ass to get out of. That's the so. problem. If you can't get out of it and, and on down market, good luck finding a buyer to get out. Especially exactly. They, so you're, basically, you're talking about the ones I've been in. Like LMT was a good example. Show us, uh, literally show us up like 60 or 7% on it, but the mid price was higher than what my my average price was. I couldn't even, I couldn't get out of it. Even though yeah. it was said I was up, you know, because it was basing it off, uh, I don't know if it was basing off the last price or the bid price, but... That happened a lot. It happens a lot on some of those more or less common stocks or whatever. Yeah, well, that's what I said. They're thinly traded, so you know the mid price is not worth it a lot of times. That's why I, I always look at how much it is, and I only do the ones that I know. You know, I mean, I always go into a new, I'll go into a new trade once I know that hey, yes, it's very liquid. In the uh, Tastyworks platform, they have that liquidity meter. You know, it's four stars, three star, two star, and one star. So you can look there real quick to see if you want to trade it. So what do you do? Uh, do you, I mean, you don't wait for down days to put stuff on specifically, do you? I mean, you might well, take advantage of those down days, right? On the down days, I did put stuff on the other day. But you on don't specifically days. wait for down days to put stuff on, right? No, not necessarily. But if it's going down, the IV is going up. I was putting stuff on. I think I did um, uh, thirty-two trades on those two days. Yeah, well, I took advantage of the down days. But what I'm basically saying, if I was starting out today, I wouldn't right. wait for a down day to put a bunch of stuff on. No, nope. right? Nope. Like, cause it's it, it does does it help? Yeah, it does. But you could be waiting around for a long time for a down day too. So yeah, but, you know, but see, you're thinking because you're only selling it. You're always thinking long. I'm looking for an update to put on the shorts. I was almost going to think that when you do your strangles, do you put one side on first? You know, oh, no. shoot, the mark is no, put up 10%. I'm going put to put the top side on. No, but bending on the pattern where it is within the high and the low. I was like, uh, there was one I was looking, let me look at my neutral one today. Because I didn't see. Take a look at OII. That's when I put, oh, that, I'm put that I have an order in to sell tomorrow. Oceaneering Inter International? Yeah. So take a look. Uh, that, that one I got an order in to do a strangle tomorrow. Double top. Double top. What do you have, 10 bucks on the bottom side? Huh? What do you have, 10 bucks on the bottom side? No, I did. It's also, if you look kind of a, um, running in a, a, um, a channel, right? And so I'm putting on the 1250-1750. Yeah, that's way more aggressive than what I would do. Yep. Um, 
Especially on a stock like that, I have no idea about, right? It's such a small company. Um, What's the market cap on it? 1.4 billion. Overvalued too. Yeah, it's just, you know, for me, I'd probably, uh, this is probably something I wouldn't play to begin with. Yeah. If I was going to play at the bottom side, I'd want to be down at like 10 bucks, probably eight bucks to be honest with you, but there's probably no money there. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, Jerry. <laughs> now, this is more in my uh, wheelhouse, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't like the. I, I know I'm probably wrong, but I, I look at I look at fundamentals on stocks a lot. Yeah, and it probably doesn't matter, but you know I do. Well, the good thing is it doesn't have a sh high short float ratio. Right. So at least you don't have to worry about Wall Street's bets attacking it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, fundamentals, Jerry, you can throw that out the window. That really doesn't matter. Yeah. You look at the five-year range, and it's dead center of the five-year range. Well, I'm looking going all the way back to like – so this literally followed exactly what oil did. It went on the decline ever since. Actually, even started before the real oil decline happened. But yeah, I don't so know. That would be a neutral position. Are they putting a seventeen fifty, twelve fifty on? I don't know what the premium is like on that. I guess it had to be juicy, as all good likes to say it. Because <laughs> I wouldn't. I probably just wouldn't touch it. It's just a dollar ten. I think a dollar ten so get you to eighteen fifty and down to ten eleven fifty. Yeah, well, the twelve fifty to me is too risky. On the bottom it's side, it's on the seventeen fifty. No, on the bottom side. Oh yeah, so good, but you're protected down to eleven fifty. Like I said, the ten dollars would probably be the highest I'd go. All right. But I'm just, uh, you know, me, Dave, Hashtag Dave safe. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I would rather put something on that's less riskier and make less. You know, I mean, that's the great thing about options. Everybody has their own strategy, whatever works for them. Not, this doesn't mean James' strategy is wrong. It doesn't at all. Like, works for him. He doesn't. He wants to deal with more, more uh, sleepless nights. Maybe he sleeps like a baby. I don't know. Like to me, it's I. <laughs> I wouldn't be sleeping like a baby with this sucker on. You know. Come on, options have contract. options. One contract. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. LBRT was another one I was looking at as a double top. Yeah, the double top uh, it doesn't starts, mean that it's going to go down necessarily. It could still break it. You're right. It's like a head and shoulders doesn't always break down, but it should, right? Um, yeah, I'm more looking at the fact that it ran from 10 to 14. So you're really kind of putting a bias on it going down than up. Yeah. Well, I would just short the stock on that one. I may not even do an option on it. So actually buying a put? No, actually just short the stock, sell the stock, sell the stock. You you own the stock? No, I just no, I don't own it. I could just sell it. Oh, sell so short. you mean actually sell so short? Sell short. Okay. Gotcha. Or you could sell, or you could sell a call. Yeah, and, which is the same thing. You can sell a 15 call for like 85 cents. Thought it's going down. But you know, have to, I'd have to see it go down first. I really don't try to put my direct directions on the stocks. No. I'll try to put a bias maybe on it, but I don't try to, that's day trading in a way. And I'm like, Dave's like, I got to reverse psychology myself and in order to, for it to be correct, <laughs> usually. Yeah. Um, there's somebody, I thought this somebody asked a question here for James, but oh, right here. I don't know if this is for James specifically, but what are your favorite three stocks or ETFs to wheel? He doesn't really wheel. Neither do I. Yeah, the one really I'm Palantir because my buddy Terry got me into that one. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm doing the Fire Eye only because I like the company. You know what I mean? So you do you actually own Palantir? I have. Well, I'm short. I'm short, and I showed the calls against it, so I may as well own it. Once, you know, that's the other thing. I'll get in early. If it goes down two or three bucks below my stock, uh, strike, I'm already selling the, the call against it as if I own it. 
I am not waiting until it gets put to me. Yeah, I don't do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> been too many, yeah, I don't do that. There's been many times where I've taken problem childs off that expire that Friday, and Friday comes around, and it's not in the money anymore. I've done that many a times now. But you have to – it's all about managing that risk. You know yep. what I mean? It is. And if I'm up to 57% buying power, i got to take some stuff off. You know what I mean? Even though they didn't end up even in the money. That's happened to me a few times. But um, So, yeah, he doesn't really wheel. Neither does Jerry, really. Although I think you've just, what, maybe you have one wheel you're doing right now. None of us I really. Got a couple, I, got, I mean, I got a couple of stocks on right now with Palantir and, and Rocket. But um, uh, I wouldn't call them my favorites. It's not something that... Uh, not something I'll be stuck in. If I exit, I, I'll exit. I'm not going to tie back into it. I don't, I don't get married to anything um, except my wife. But um, ETFs, you know, I think we've talked about it. IWM, QQQ, TQQQ, uh, SPY. Even Art K is probably, will probably fit in there. I think that would be okay if you were actually going to wheel. Um, you know, Tune in to Dave. He'll let you know how that works out. I think it's a decent one. I think it's a decent one to wheel. I don't think it would be my first choice, but I'm gonna. I'm wheeling it. I, I don't like to say I'm like spare tire wheeling it or something because I'm not planning. I never planned on wheeling it. You know, I figured it. Why not just take the stock? It was. It's down. I'm down a thousand dollars in position right now. I was able to sell cover calls against it. Make three hundred something dollars. Three hundred and fifty bucks or something like that. You know, just the first time out. So if it goes back up to 110, it'll take my 200 shares away, and I'm out of it. You know, I no plans of wheeling the thing. But so I, I really, yeah. that strategy is flawed in a way. Wheeling is not 100% bulletproof. It really depends on which stocks you do, because otherwise you're going to get stuck if they keep going down. Like Neo is a good example. You don't want to wheel Neo. You don't <clears> wheel <throat> crap like that that could go down way below. And you're going to have to buy more or just be stuck there not making any money. Yeah, you don't want to wheel Mara. <laughs> Riot, Mara, those those are terrible stocks to wheel. Probably terrible stocks to do anything on, really. But um, I yeah, don't know. Would you, do a, would you do a CSP on it? Either one of you. <laughs> no. 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 When, like I said, once my strike is breached, I have no problem putting a call spread on. And it may be one strike above it because the premium you're going to collect is probably the stock can go up two or three bucks and you're still going to be breaking even. So that's interesting. So if it goes down below your strike, you'll put a call on right away. Yep. To me, I think almost the exact opposite. I'm like, oh, it's already came down. That means it's going to come back up faster, right? So it's less, it's more riskier to put the call on then. Yeah. You know, you don't. Are you going to take the stock if it's below your strike, or are you actually just right. going to take the loss? And I'll take it, and I basically have a covered. I have a covered call on, but I've collected the the money earlier than the next Up month. Front. So Up that front. makes sense, yeah. though. If you were going to take the stock, yeah. I get that. Yeah, it's kind of what I did on on RK, right? I put it on before the market closed, like an hour or something before the market closed. Mm -hmm. But because I didn't know that thing could have went up to one ten before. Right, it could have went up to one ten before the market closed. It was only four dollars away, and that's not a bad. That's not a hard move for RK to do. No, it's not. So I had to wait. I had to wait it out, but it made sense. Okay, I'm gonna put this on now. I'm gonna take the stock. Why would I want to wait till Monday? You know what I mean? Right. So okay, I get it. Um, yeah, but so if you weren't I, going so to so take the stock, it. you wouldn't put the call on, right? I'm sorry. If you weren't going to take the stock, you wouldn't put the call on. Right. Yeah, so when Rocket went down because of earnings, I, I put a twenty two eighty nine call and a nineteen eighty nine call right against it. Once it went down to like sixteen or seventy bucks, whatever it hit, I put those two calls on right away because now I'm gonna make money on the I'm gonna make money if it keeps going down, I'm lessening my risk to start with. Right. Yeah, I, I'm just never using that situation where I have to deal with that usually. It's very off it's very rare that I get anything in the money let alone that ends in the money on Friday or expiry. So it's very rare for me. This, you know, it takes a, it takes a week like this for to test anything. And uh, 
And even then, uh, some of the stuff was just being proactive. The other stuff I took off, I didn't need to take off. Come to find out, but Let's see, is there any other questions in here? If you have any questions for uh, James, let us know. I know you can get get them on Discord anytime you want, but <laughs> it does uh, it does more people good if you actually bring it out here uh, in the stream because other people can watch it that are not a part of the Discord. Another thing I guess I bring up is that I put you know we always do we all make mistakes right I put a Disney trade on and I put it on in the wrong account meaning I I uh, let's say I have an account with forty thousand dollars and I put a strangle on in that one not realizing not, not realizing the buying power it was using if I put it in the other account because I think it took seventeen thousand dollars in buying power because in that that account it was it, it was the Tasty Works account I just Turn around and took it off the other day for the next day or two days later for $65 profit rather than wait because if it goes against me, I can't defend it because it's in a, it's in the side that it's in a $40,000 account, right? Yeah, I was in the same boat in my snow leap that I bought. I couldn't average down nothing because I only had it was like eight grand in there at the time, but yeah, um, I looked at Disney when it was down, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, Disney, you know, I'm like, I'm not a big fan of Disney personally, but. You know, I'm like, if it's down, I'm going to try to put some, make some money on it, right? And I was like, try to get down to the 160, and it's like, just too much buying power for how much money I was going to make on it. I'm like, forget this. I, I had 165, 200 on for 325, and I think I took, took it off for 265 or 275. But it only had like three days. So I said, all right, I'm just going to get out because I put it down in the wrong account. You know? it, was the, it was an earnings trade. Yeah, the 160 was just questionable for me. I'm like, nah. Yeah, I mean the beta is you know it's one point two, so I'm like, okay, well this isn't you know a super solid stable company, right? Like it's it you think it would be a lot more stable than it is, and you know I mean are they even fully open yet, Jerry? Do you know that? Uh, Florida is, California isn't. Yeah, that's just odd. Um, see here, what's this thumper? Instead of buying calls for protection. Have you thought about selling a good to cancel buy limit order to buy a hundred shares? If your short gets breached, get protection, but not giving up the premium early. Freaking thumper. Buy and call for protection. I don't know buying calls. I wouldn't buy it. I was selling a call. Yeah. When the, when the short was breached, I sold a call against it. So basically, you're basically long the stock when you think about it. And I consider myself oh, long. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Here you go. It's on the Jay Lizard side. So, yeah, you would be buying a call on the Jay Lizard side. That, geez, Thumper, we're go you're going back like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we talked about Jay Lizards like an hour ago, and yeah, you would be buying a call because it's a, it's a it's a spread. So you're selling a call and you're buying a call. So he's asking, would you just uh, set a limit to buy the hundred shares instead of buying the call? Stock's already gone up so much. You're you're buying the stock at a much higher price, and I'm not, not sure you wanted to buy the stock at that higher price. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's talking about here. I'm trying to map it out in my head, but my uh, it's Thumper here talking too. So, uh, well, you skipped. It. I don't remember skipping that Thumper, but um, yeah, good to cancel buy order. Yeah, I don't even like those. Hmm. Well, if you're if if you end up good to cancel buy order. If your short gets breached, oh damn it! <laughs> He's talking about an AJ Lizard specifically, though. You're buying, you're buying the stock to satisfy the short call being in the money. So you'd be neutral if it went out. You'd be neutral if yeah. you're stopping. You're stopping your. You're stopping the bleed. If it keeps running up, right? I think he's confused, think he's confused on the Jade Lizard. Jade Lizard, you put it all in at one time. 
put it all in at the first time. You say, I'm going to sell a call, I'm going to sell a put, and I'm buying another call above the price of the, the call that I sold to cover me or limit my risk for the upside. You put it all in at the same time. You don't straddle, you don't work your way into it. <clears throat> so with what Thumper's talking about here, you'd actually just have a strangle on and then you'd buy, you'd buy a hundred shares or you actually just, oh, I see what he's saying. So if it got breached, yeah. you just have a good to cancel a buy above your, it'd be above your, uh, your, it'd be your short call, right? Yeah. Cause you buy it, you buy the shares and it, it, you're capped on the upside right there. You're done. So what is that? Uh, that's actually not a bad idea because it would save you money. And it still have protection, right? Mm -hmm. So it would save you money because you don't have to put the spread on. So you're not buying that. This here is not being triggered until it hits that limit order, which honestly, I don't want the order sitting out there for that long, but that's just me. Um, it's just yeah, annoying. The probability to have it. touch is probably 15%, 20% better than the probability of expiring out of the money. You know, it's going to go higher, it's going to touch it, and then could come right back. Now you own the stock and it goes right back in. I would almost, you know me, the strangles are just wider yep. than what the spread would be. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a bad idea, though, although you have to come up with 100 shares, right? That could be expensive for some people versus actually just, you know, having that spread on, then it takes care of it for you. Yeah, you know. the upside by doing the spread, and you know that going in, you know? Yeah, Jerry likes to say, yeah, uh, it's a guaranteed loss. <laughs> The spread, which is true, it really is, <laughs> but uh, it's just how you look at it. Um, that's a good one, Temper. Uh, I don't think that for some people that's an option, though. You know, 100 shares of Microsoft, you know, what, 300 bucks, 400 bucks? 40 grand for some people is not going to be an option. Let me see. Yeah, well, $24. <laughs> so... Uh, but I like that actually, though. That's not that's that's just another tool to have in the tool shed. Okay, I don't want to. You're gonna make more by just putting a strangle on, and then there you go. You would just yeah, you do this one for one either. If you're thinking it's gonna come back in, you could buy 30 shares to lower your deltas. You know, true. You could do that too. You don't have to do 100 shares. You could do 50 shares and then reduce your delta that way. Reduce your risk. <laughs> Lots of options. Lots of options and options. <laughs> Yeah, leave it up to Thumper to come up with some weird old things here. Have you ever used that repair strategy? Uh, what is it? Was it selling two, buying one, or buying two, selling one, or something? In fact, that's what I recommended to that guy Rajiv on the on the platform. It was down to twenty five. Basically, you buy, you buy, and I asked him. I said, if you have the con if you have the money, buy twenty five. And I probably wouldn't do the full amount, but you could buy fifteen of the call spreads, the calls, and then sell. 30 of the um, calls above it. Yeah, I pinned that in one of the Discord channels, by the way, for anybody that joins in there. I can't, it might have been a resources, but mm -hmm. I don't, I've never tried it. And uh, I still think that it probably, it's a, probably a, a specific use case to even use yeah. that, probably. Yeah. You know, like you got to be down enough, right? You down, far, down 30, 40, 50%, I think, for it to really pay off. 40 or 50% after being assigned, or are you talking about just an options? On an option. And you and you have to usually go out three months because it's not going to repair itself overnight. You got to say, all right, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm out the capital. I'm going to put this out three months. So you're going to look right. three months out to sell enough premium. You're going to buy the, buy the X13, let's say, 15, whatever he's going to do, and sell 30 of them. So you got to go out probably three months. I think I, when I did three months, it came out that it would have worked out for him. But he's down like thirty-seven thousand dollars on that trade. Yeah, that's riot, folks. Was it riot or it was Mara? Mara. Was Mara. 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 Yeah. yeah, we've talked about this one on this stream probably week after week after week, and it's just not one I would touch. And we've said, hey, don't touch this thing, um, especially with that many contracts. But I don't know where he is tonight. Um, it's up over twenty-five hundred percent. That's after. A decline where Jerry and I talked about it, you know, probably a month or two ago when it was up near $45, right? So that thing was way up 
it's just not something I would touch. And I don't care how juicy the premium is. You touch that one, James? No way. <laughs> but it has that. high IV. Why wouldn't you? Just curious. Because I look like like y'all just said. You have how far did it run and how fast did it run? I want to look at something. I'd like to look, see smaller candles that are doing a gradual decline that I can say, all right, it's a pretty stable stock. Yeah. I'm it's not got a high short flow too, so it is definitely a candidate to get attacked, but um even just one contract? Nope. Okay. No. There's too many other good ones out there. You know, so that's interesting because it's a small, it's a, it's a small company. It's actually bigger than some of the other ones he actually mentioned. Mm -hmm. But so it's just a case by case basis there. Yeah, you uh, see, like OII, for example, is not, you know, I mean, it's basically the same size, if not smaller. But yeah, but what are you basing what it's what its size is on? I'm just looking at market cap. I know, but that's what I'm saying. But you've got, that's twenty five hundred percent. That's twenty five hundred percent overvalued. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with, I'm there with you. <laughs> so I'm saying the market cap isn't twenty isn't what it is. <laughs> right. Well, it doesn't have a Ford PE, and even their PE is actually pretty low. But oh, so OI for example is still overvalued too. Which one? OII. Yeah. But okay, yeah, no, that, that's a good one. Uh, you know, we've said stay away from it, stay away from it. There's, I mean, why put yourself at risk? I mean, if you're going to play it, if you if you have to play it, play it with one contract, people. There's no reason to be playing that thing with 25, 10, 25, 30. Um, yeah. yeah Does, uh, really, it, it's really tough. Like I was, I was saying Thursday, you know, I'd almost rather have people selling at the money on, you know, Coca-Cola. Freaking something like that. Sell out the money. Yeah, you could. Actually. Instead of messing around with these crazy companies. I saw a thing that just popped up about do you, would you do options on Neo, right? He asks this every week, by the way. He's just right, pulling so, our leg. But we'll answer so the question. I'll, I'll just address it from a different point of view, right? What kind of options do you want to do? If you, if you say the electronic vehicle market is going to be great two years from now, Buy a leap, you know, and you've risked if you've risked what you you're gonna do, and you could also sell calls against it for the first three, four, five periods if you want, you know, for the next three or four months. If you if you try to do something short term, I wouldn't touch it, you know. Unless you want to own the stock, if the stock is down, I think it was trading now. I think it's down to thirty bucks right now, right? And if you could sell it for five dollars, and you say, hey, I, I'd like the stock at twenty five, then sell it put on it but knowing that it's going to be put to you so that's a stock that could definitely go down to 10 bucks easily that's right so but it's on your opinion of that company all right palantir is a different boat that shouldn't even be lumped into this question because it's not the same type of company it's a legit company yeah mm -hmm. you know they got you know i mean it's not <laughs> They didn't even, there wasn't a SPAC or anything like that. It is a little bit overvalued, but um, it's a solid company. It's not junk like NEO is. And it was Chinese stock too, so they can literally just, whatever they want to do that stock, they could do. They want to come out with some sort of scandal. They want to you know, manipulate the stock or the currency over there. You're all susceptible to that. So it should be lumped into the same question. Kevin, I did CSP on Neo, Palantir, Mara, Tilray. Yeah, I wouldn't do any of those probably, except maybe yep. Palantir. I don't probably. know about Tilray. You know that one, Jerry? I, I know the company, yeah. but. Which one? I've, I've sold some puts on it, and uh, um, it's not something I'd Ooh. not be on my list to own, but I've, I have scalped some money from them. So what do you mean, Kevin? I did CSP on Neo, Palantir, Mara, and Tilray, and then change your mind. So you put them on and took them off right away, or what? <laughs> Jerry, you did that on Now, didn't you? Yeah, I did that on Now. I just <laughs> oh, see man. that's that's my problem hanging out with you, big whales. Is is I'm a I'm a small small tadpole, and I see you guys putting on these. Three hundred, four hundred dollars stocks, and I'm like, ah, I can get into there. And then uh, I really think about it, and I'm like, I really shouldn't be putting 
<laughs> putting this on and I get out. And uh, I think you guys are still in that, aren't you? Yeah, it turned into a problem child a little bit. Yeah, so. see? <laughs> <laughs> Service now, N O W is the ticker. But yeah, I have a now on, and uh, it's only 2% for me in the money at this point. That thing is, uh, it expires uh, two weeks from now. But uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned about it, even though it's, it's a solid company, but I don't want to take it though. You know what I mean? So yeah, you got out right, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh see that's that's all i ever wanted thank you for the great exp yeah there you go you got to thank you james yeah we wouldn't touch it uh neo i remember trading it at five bucks yeah well back in like 2019 or something like that wasn't it dropped below like a dollar or something like that yeah i remember it at two yeah that's when the big old scandal came out or whatever the heck it was Palantir keep on lowering cost basis almost daily. Uh, I think he wheels Palantir, investing teacher Lance. We had Lance on a few weeks ago. Um, it's a, it's I'm just not a big fan of Palantir. Um, I'll make money. I'll I'll play it, but the problem is that the people that are making money on it are trying to play it at like eighteen dollars or something like that. And there's no you know like there's no money where I want to be. You know, so. Uh, he closed them by the end of the day, Jerry. <laughs> now he's sticking with uh, ETF, XLE, and RK. And RK, RK is kind of a little even questionable lately. Yeah, that's a, a, I mean, you got to be prepared for the volatility. That's for sure. As long as you're RK? comfortable with it, you know, as long as you're comfortable with the volatility and, and your account can handle it and you can handle it, um, that's what I've been seeing a lot lately is, is oh, uh, rocket dropped. What do I do? I don't want to be in this. And I'm like, well, wait, you were, you, you sold a contract saying that you wanted to be in this and now you don't want to be in this. So well, <laughs> where's the, in their I, I understand the no assignment strategy, right? But yeah. still it's, you, you should have a, a, a you know, a, a thought, you know, like you could possibly, you know, you are agreeing to to buy this, so yeah. um, I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick up for him. Say I get in a bunch of crap I don't want to own. I don't really want to own anything, <laughs> honestly. But, well, I yeah, don't either. I but you it. should have a plan. You should have a plan of what to do. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But I definitely don't want to own a Neo. I definitely don't want to own a Mara. Like I'd rather own a Service now, right? But I don't want to take ownership of it. But yeah, I get what you're coming from. Uh, see, I'd rather risk it with. Of it. <laughs> What's that? You don't want forty six thousand dollars of it? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you know what's interesting? I took twenty two thousand dollars of RK. It didn't affect my buying power at all. No, so. because because once you own the stock, they don't use that buying power that much against you. Because now you no. have the same equity. It's the same. Equity. It was three thousand dollars. They they claim it was three thousand dollars of maintenance. Or margin impact, but it really the percentage didn't change, so I don't think it's even counted in there. It just pulls out of your excess liquidity. You don't have as much excess. Correct. Yeah, but yeah, eh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I rather risk it with Kathy. Yeah, I don't know. Kathy's been uh, she's been a little off her game lately. No, I mean, what what do you expect when you put Broku and Tesla at the very top of RK, right? Uh, let's see here. There are cases where you might want to just wheel and cases where you're just going to try and sell premium and roll if needed. Correct. I don't really. Uh, so there's cases where you might want to. Wheel. So yeah, I get it. I don't go with in anything with intentions of wheeling, though. Right. There's a difference there. Because right? I think investing teacher Lance and investing sensei, for example, they are actually wheeling on stuff on purpose. I'm not trying to wheel. So there's two different ways to look at that there. I don't think the wheel's a bad strategy. It's just it's there's a flaw to it though. If you're in a crappy stock and it continues to go down, what options do you have besides add more money to it or go long dated or something like that? If you're doing it weekly, I have noticed there isn't much of a difference between buying on Monday and Tuesday. What are you talking about by buying anyway? I'm not buying anything. We're selling. Maybe we're talking about there. Close. 
I'm assuming he's talking about actually selling open, but what are you talking about, Cody? Oh, wait, here you go. Sorry. <laughs> Meant to say selling premiums. Okay, so sell to open. You got to get those right, everybody. Sell to open, buy to close, buy to open, sell to close. You know, there's a big difference between all that stuff. Just when you sell, when you say sell an option, that could mean two separate things. So you need to get the terminology right. Um, so here, doing a weekly, I've noticed that there's much difference between selling on Monday and Tuesday. Well, I try to put stuff on on Friday to have that bake over the weekend, but especially on a three day weekend. I don't know. I think that's a case by case basis. It depends on what the uh, what the what the market does on Monday or Tuesday, right? Yeah, with the volatility. Yeah. yeah. And what the movement of the stock was and the strike that you were looking for. And what stock? Because I, I know that you're doing those, you know, the neos of the world. Uh, if I have a 25 account usage of 50% buying power, 12.5K, uh, no. I'd be buying power 80K, which is 40K. Yeah, I don't know, Jerry. I'm getting lost here, so I'm trying to math it. <laughs> yeah, well, how much net? You know, 20, you a, a, technically, in IB, you have a hundred thousand dollars of buying power, um, but net lick is twenty five k. Yeah, so your net lick is twenty five k, and fifty percent maintenance margin would be twelve point five k. So, um, I I don't know if that answers your question or not. Yeah, the maintenance margins all over the place too. You need to just, you know, in IEB I run a strip, but you need to go in there and check that because it's sometimes it's ten percent, but it's not always ten percent. Sometimes it's higher than that. It's stock specific and it's even broker specific. Yeah. Some brokers require different maintenance margin requirements. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a twenty five thousand account, I you should pull it back from twelve five and get back down to eight to ten thousand. Yeah, 50% is a little risky at 25K. It's hot. I'd call it hot. Yeah. Because, you know, for this past this past week, before this past week, I expected a large deposit to come in for me, a, a large chunk of money. So that the week before last, I was running at 30, 35%, and I felt really comfortable. But I expected this lump sum of money to come in. So... I went ahead and pre-sold, of course, which was a mistake, and I got myself up to 50%. You spent the money before you had it? Well, yeah. That's, that's the American way. They had <laughs> that's the American way. <laughs> so I got 10 chickens, is, folks. They're not hatched yet, but I got 10. The lump sum got delayed, and there I go. There goes the market this week. So you just have to be careful running that hot. Yeah, that's pretty hot. And not to mention, and I've seen other people do this, like, oh, just put more money in there. Like, you know, oh, yeah, well, you know, it takes four or five days to get it in there. Well, <laughs> if, if that's the case, you know, do a freaking wire. Spend the 20 bucks. Do a wire. I got feedback, Jerry. Hang on a second. Okay. I, I think it's you. I think it's you, Jerry. How? I don't hear it. Yeah, I don't know. It was like a little flicker that caused it. Let me try. Hello? How about, how about now? Hello? Hello? Oh, shit. Some shit. Yeah, I don't know. Let me turn my volume down. That's just weird. It did the same thing last week. Um, Let's see here. How confident are you guys in these cover call ETS maintaining their high payout range month to month in futures? Thinking new C Jeppy, not so much QLD. How can you not mention QLD? Um, <laughs> could the payout ratio decay over time? I'm actually thinking it would because, you know, although I'd take that back because, I mean, <laughs> I mean, hang on a second. Let me just tell you what it is. But so VIX is back up to 18. Um, you know, and that was a concern with the VIX dropping or how are these going to maintain their payout? But the VIX is back up, uh, you know, so I don't know. Jerry, why don't you answer that? Because you're 
probably the most qualified person to answer that. I'd say it could vary. That's all. Um, you know, um, QILD, of course, is managed. Uh, I, I don't know. The only thing worrisome about QILD is that they go ahead and change their policy again. Then, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of them. But uh, you're always going to, for now, you're always going to get 1% of the net asset value of the fund. So wherever that lands is what you'll get. Uh, so you kept new CR managed? Uh, no, they're not. Yeah. No. Jeppy no. was, but Jeppy is uh, now. I'm talking about. Uh, what do you mean by managing? District... If they're doing if they're doing cover calls and callers, that's like managing a way. No, I'm talking about a distribution policy. Oh, so, gotcha. Uh, QILD is policy is a one percent per month distribution. Neither Nusi nor Jeppy have that that distribution policy. So, which is smart. Yes, so you're, you're gonna, it's going to be variable on Nusi and Jeppy. You'll see it more on Jeppy because um, I don't know. I, I actually don't know why because the, the ELNs that they get their fixed income distributions from aren't transparent. So um, I think it's going to be – I think you can get high payout ranges from all of them. But QILD is going to follow the share price, so – if QILD dumps to fifteen bucks, you're going to get a fifteen cent distribution rate. Yeah, and it's a Ponzi scheme. Um, paying out more than they make, so I don't know. Doesn't mean I won't add it, but thanks for that question. Uh, I don't know what your name is. Best idea. Does weekend theta decay actually exist? I think it does. I count yeah. it in there. Yeah, it does. Three day weekend, baby. <laughs> Coming up too in a few weeks. You may not see it go away, but you know, like I said, the options got ten days left. Every day is a day. You know? Yeah. Why is gas so expensive, James? What's that? <laughs> Why is gas so expensive? I don't know that. I'll say it because the pipeline was right. <laughs> but that's coming back slowly. Well, they blamed on the pipeline. Yeah. Um does weekend theta decay actually exist? I bought to close my TNA CSP Friday for 0.05, so I could take advantage of weekend decay. What? So do you mean you sold another one on Friday? Yeah. So that would be taking advantage of the weekend decay. He must have sold to open. Yeah, but yeah, if maybe. I... If you sold something for a nickel, it's not going to decay anything over a weekend. No. It's yeah. five cents next Friday. Especially if it's one of those ones that doesn't. It's like five, you know, point five cents is the lowest it goes until it's at zero. Right. Uh, on Friday, here's with Jeeve right here. Um, yeah, we've we've seen you in the Discord talking about Mara or whatever. One of those ones. Um, was listening, doing some else, and. Then, Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We brought you to the spotlight, buddy. Um, maybe I can set up a call with you for the repair strategy. I want to try it, but tough on here to understand. Yeah, well, just reach out. Um, it's pinned in the uh, in the resources. I think it's pinned in there. Just go to the pinned area, and you'll see it in there. But we can also do a you know not a one on one, but we can go into like a private chat in the Discord private like stream in there too and do that as well or you can join on thursday night and talk in there too it's up to you what's your six market six market what's your six month market outlook jerry and james i think me and james are going to be opposite yeah. here yeah. um i see nothing but up i don't see a reason for it to go down um i don't think inflation is going to freaking rear its ugly head um i think everything's just going to work out and i'm optimistic james going to be the pessimistic one here i, I don't think. know we'll see <laughs> yeah. I, i'm i'm maybe i guess i'll be more on the bearish side as i think we have a lot of people unemployed it's, i think you know a couple of things are going to happen in it won't happen in six months the tax the tax issue but a lot of the corporate earnings that have been reported 
and I was an executive at a company, a lot of the corporate earnings that have happened um, are going to be hard to make those same earnings when the tax rate goes back up to what it was before. Um, and I think that there's a lot of people that have been working for home. There's a lot of expenses inside the corporate world that have not been paid over the last year. And when as the people start coming back to work, a lot of the corporate expenses are going to go back up and it's going to be a little bit harder to maintain the earnings year over year. I agree. I agree with that. But I think that will, I think prices will go up on whatever products they make or services they provide. Right. Like you think that the rich are going to pay more taxes or the corporate rates going to go up and that's not going to get passed down. Right. Like that's going to get passed down to everybody in the country. Poor people, middle class, rich people, it doesn't matter. Right. So that that's going to offset a little bit of it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of in between here. I think we're going to go up, but I don't think that it's going to be like some crazy amount. Well, there you go, Tamar. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So, yeah. so, so uh, <laughs> when you when you print six trillion dollars, that money's got to go somewhere, right? All my like it's neutral right now. You know what's that? A lot of my trades are neutral right now. It's not like you know I have some bearish ones on, but I'm not. I'm not. The the worst thing you can do is sell all naked puts because you everybody experienced that in the last couple of days. You yeah, know, I need to get back to doing that, some calls. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I agree. I actually agree with that. Yeah. Um, but I gotta, I gotta pick and choose my spots of where I want to do yeah. some strangles because, like, I mean, for instance, uh, back in December, I was doing a bunch of strangles and I was making money every single freaking day. It didn't matter where the market was up, market was down, nothing. Now, contrast that to to last week where I had nothing but freaking naked puts on, I was sitting on my hands, not doing anything. So, right. yeah. so, so think of this. I always say, think of the size of the account, right? Let's say somebody's trading a $10,000 account and they got whatever, five contracts of one and two contracts of another and one of another. If that, if the sum of those notions is more than five or $6,000, they're in trouble because they can't do anything else and they can't take possession of all, Fifteen or twenty thousand dollars in stock, you know, and that's where they're going to be in trouble. Is you know, it, it, there's no problem with it if you you know if you have three or four thousand dollars in notional on, and you got a ten thousand dollar account, and it starts going down. And you say, fine, I can take the stock. Um, but if you can't take the stock and bear it, wear it, you know, bear it out, wait it out, you get yourself into trouble. And I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> I I I need to get back to doing some calls. Um, I mean, here's something we're talking about right here, but because we did, it was you can blame Stock Ninja. He got Roku big time and lost a lot of money on Roku because kept doubling down and on naked calls. Okay, so doubling down and getting upgraded and blah blah blah. And that's back when RK was flying too. But um, it makes sense. It doesn't really cost you anything extra in buying power. Why not make money on both sides? And going back to this question here. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. For what we're doing here, we can make money anyway. You know, if the market stays right where it is for the next year, we're going to make money. That's perfect. Yeah. It's almost preferable in a way. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not preferable, <laughs> I guess, because the quicker the market goes up, the more the more that our CSPs print, or the quicker they print. But but we'll make money either way. So that's interesting. Yeah, so we got kind of like a contrarian bull <laughs> slash, you know, median, mediocre, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I agree. That helps. Short term neutral, long term bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree, guys. I'm crazy. Uh, let it be a lesson. Don't chase 600 or 700 in premium. You can, you can end up being down 40K. Um, I have a story like that, honestly. I sold, uh, some people may know the story, but I sold uh, CSP against Wind Resorts back in 2015. And, uh, you know, I was in Costa Rica sitting on the beach. I'm like, hey, you know what? Let me just make a couple hundred bucks while I'm sitting on the beach, you know? And uh, it it went in the money. I'm like, oh, fine, I'll take the stock, you know? And then it tanked all the way to 50 bucks, okay? So I took that stock, 
about like 149, 147 or something like that. And it tanked all the way to $50. So sometimes when you have that mindset, oh, I'll just make a quick, you know, buck or whatever, it can definitely hurt you. So uh, yeah, down to 40K. Mm -hmm. I have to <laughs> he blames Elon. Yeah, Elon's smoking some crack. How come you blame Elon though? Let me see. Isn't Mara, right? Bitcoin. Oh, that's that's the crypto mining stock, right? Yeah. 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 Doing Bitcoin. I don't blame Elon. I blame the stock. It's when it's up three thousand percent. What do you expect? I mean, I, 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 I blame social media. Elon could I he got on Saturday Night Live or whatever and spout it off and so uh, but see that's the thing these these things trend on on twitter they trend on all these things and then people get wide-eyed and, and they go oh what is this people are making money in this i need to get in on it and um that's how those things work it's this the, there's people that make a ton of money but there's going to be people that get hurt a lot so once the names on the media don't touch it. It's too late. Yeah. Don't touch you it. You know what Mark Cuban would say, right? Stay away from it. Yeah, Mark Cuban would be like, I can spot a bubble a mile away. You know, that's yeah, he'd be out. He'd be the first person out in the bubble. So once everybody's starting to talk about it, it's in, it's in the news, it's all over the news, it's on newspapers. Everybody like that don't even invest, never invest in their life, come to you and say, Oh, you in crypto or you in do you in doge, whatever. It's it's a bubble. Um, how much should we spend a month eating out? Zero. Um, yeah, that's the reason why you're single. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see here. We, uh, we had great success with strangles until, yeah, well, I just said that earlier. Um, we, I definitely, we, Jerry, we need to get back into them. Yeah, I was talking, I was talking with James. I was talking with James the other day and I think I'm going to just, uh, do the indexes on those be selective the indexes you're fine like i said if yeah. you're worried about individual stock and you want to play it do it do it covered on the top side you're jay lizard jerry throw another throw another acronym in your or whatever <laughs> zebra so throw something in there uh currently i got assigned xle which you might have even done that one jerry at 55 my plan was to sell acc when it's going up and do another CSP when it's going down on Monday. Good idea. By the way, I don't mind holding XLE. Uh, that's oil, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the oil. ETF. I like the XOP. I prefer the XOP for some reason. I see, currently but, I got assigned 55. My plan is to sell. Okay. So you're going to do a 55 cover call? Do another CSP when it goes when it's going down. How do you know it's going to go down on Monday? You got a crystal ball. <laughs> if you do, share. <laughs> you can get a buck and a quarter for the fifty-five. May as well sell it. See, that's that's that that's see that's, well, I would the, have that's sold it technically on Friday, the wheel. That's technically the wheel. You sell he, at he, the he, money. He's probably get a wheel, sign. Yeah. You sell at the money cover call. Yeah. So at the money, if it goes through it, then fine. You made one hundred twenty-five dollars, and you you took away your loss. Why Come didn't on. you sell it to open on Friday, though? I'm just curious. Why didn't you sell to open the cover call on Friday? Uh, I had XLE at forty-nine and call it called away at fifty-three. So he's basically playing even higher than what he got assigned at. That's not bad. I don't know. I mean, it's not a strategy I like. Um. I don't want to be stuck in something. I don't care. Like, yeah, I just don't want to be stuck. Like, if our K goes down to 80 bucks, I'm going to be stuck down there, you know? That's why I get average down. <laughs> so, we've been going for almost two hours and uh, we're down at the bottom here. There's like zero questions. So, uh, we'll give it another few minutes here and we'll sign off. If there's any more questions, we'll answer them. I got a question for James. Um, how how long do you picture your uh, trading days before full retirement? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Put it this way: I don't want to go back to work. 
<laughs> you work what industry are you in? I was in the automotive industry. Okay. You work remote? Uh, I was remote until, you know, they're going back to work, but gotcha. I'm not going back. It's tough. I wouldn't want to go back either. Like, they, oh, you got to fly back up to Seattle. But pfft, whatever. I don't want to be flying anywhere anymore. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, so you started options in, what, 2004. When did you, you know, start investing, I guess? Uh, I was investing there. I was investing. Did you invest any earlier? Yeah. I went through a divorce in 2001, and um, so I lost half my 401k at that point. Actually, I lost 90% of it. <laughs> because of the divorce or because of the dot com went dot gone? No, because of the divorce. <laughs> I was waiting for a yes, but <laughs> yeah. it, it was an accommodation. I'll tell you a quick story. So we made a mistake with the attorney. We said we were going to split everything 50 50, but I, because I wanted to continue to contribute to the 401k, I said, we took the money. We said, let's say it was 100 grand. We said, all right, we'll go, we'll give you 50,000 and I'll continue to put in so you'll get 50,000 of it. By that time, the dot com happened. By the time divorce is final, so it went down to fifty-five thousand. She got the fifty, and I got five. Oh man! Oh. <laughs> so the the fifty percent was it was a mistake, but you live and learn, right? So uh, that's ouch. just bad luck, right there. It was just bad luck, you know. So I contributed to fund it, but she got the fifty thousand because that's what the agreement said. But you damn know, it! Like I said, we all have stories. <clears throat> so. Yeah, I don't have any like that. Just keep moving on. Yeah. As good as that one. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is back what well, only took, you know, four or five years after that, it was back up to all time highs, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, it was a lost decade. So it was pretty much right back where it was back in 2001. Um, yeah, I agree. All good. Yeah. Um, well, it's been two hours. Uh, we'll cut it here. Um, they appreciate you coming on, James. Uh, we always invite everybody that comes on to come on anytime they want. So you want to come on and talk anytime you want, we'll always have you back. And uh, if you got you know new things you want to share or anything like that, come on. We appreciate you hanging out in the Discord and participating in there. Um, especially in the Thursday night chat, because a lot of people just come in there and they don't really talk. Um, I don't know if they're shy or what, but, you know, so it's good to have a new face in there uh, besides the usual suspect uh, suspects. So uh, you want to say anything, uh, James, before we head out? You know, like I said, I think we all learn from each other. Um, that's why I did been vocal in the Discord. I do have the time now. Um, I have the capital now that I can trade with what I want to do. Um, so that's why I think I'll be fine and be successful doing it. Um, yeah, there's two things. That's why I've been in and out of trading because when I was super swamped at work, it's like I do very few trades. Other times I do 30 trades a week, 40, 50 trades a week. You know, I went back and looked four years ago. I did over, over 2,200 trades four years ago. And then the next year I did a, I don't know, four or 500, you know? So it goes up and down depending on how, what all was going on in the job and everything else. So, I think this is going to change a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to go back to work. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like a lot of people, I mean, that's, that's hard to say that because a lot of people are working remote. Like I'm hundred percent remote now. I'm like my customer, like some of those people even moved away and like, they're never going back in the office, you know? So I'm never going back in. I don't have to fly anywhere, but I do plan to retire next year anyway. Just, you know, it just sucks too, because, this is like it took a long time to get where I'm at to not have to go into work to get paid what they pay me, you know, and be able to trade options <laughs> during the day. And like this is like everybody's dream at this point, you know, yeah, but it it's, it's enough is enough. You can only, you know, like I always like to say, your U-Haul, you can't take it with you to the grave. Right. So the bigger the U-Haul is, you know, it doesn't matter. You're not going to bury the U-Haul with you. Right. So just. When is enough enough, right? Um, make sure you uh, take, take a look at the Discord there. And uh, I don't know which All Goods link is, but uh, yeah, anyways. That's uh, Jerry's channel if you want to go subscribe to him. Mine's the one below and, and all that. So we'll cut it here. Thanks a lot for coming on, James. Jerry, as usual. Um, I enjoyed it. 
Yeah, so. definitely. Thanks, James. Um, like I said, all these people in the chat here, join the Discord. This is the type of type of person that can that you can get one on one freaking knowledge from uh, in the Discord. It's 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 extremely valuable and, and you take advantage of it. So uh, appreciate you, James. And uh, thank you guys. All right, y'all let's have a good week. <laughs> yeah. Futures are down. Uh, well, the futures down futures are down 64 to nothing. Basically it's a pocket change. So we'll see you uh, during the week. Take care, everybody. See ya.